All right, so let's uh, let's talk about this Dynamite show. And listen, blokes, yeah, I may miss something here and there, but I do a show with Vinny every Thursday night, and we spend 90 minutes talking about these two shows. So I'll get to it, bros. But uh, we opened up with a, um, I don't want to call it a Raw segment, but it's what Raw does. MJF came out with uh, his whole crew and the usual, you know, no respect for Wardlow. Fans are chanting for Wardlow. He's bragging, of course, that he beat CM Punk twice in Chicago. And, of course, CM Punk comes out and he wants a match. And long story short, MJF says, listen, we're going to do a match tonight. It'll be you and a partner of your choosing who cannot be Sting or Darby Allen. And if you and your partner can beat FTR, you can have a rematch with me anytime, any place. And they set it up for later in the show, which may have been the first time ever that they did an opening segment to set up a match on the same show. And as Mike noted, this is a this is a WWE trope, but doing something rarely, oh, there's very few things that if you do it rarely, aren't fine. The issue is when you do them all the time. So I thought this was a fun segment. I thought that it led to a fun match. I had no problem with it. Andrade, Sting, and Darby have their meeting. He can't get this little kid. A little kid, Darby, notes that he wants the TNT title, but so does Andrade. Dave seems to think this is a build to them just both being in the ladder match. I feel like they've been building this up for like four or five weeks. There has to be a singles match coming. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm getting out of this. Wardlow beat the Blade. For reasons unknown, they put in time. The only thing the fans want to see from Wardlow right now is the symphony. And him selling for the Blade through a commercial break. I mean, this this crowd was dead until he hit that first powerbomb. Then he powerbombed him four times, was a superstar, and pinned him and won and that was the end of that. We had the Inner Circle team meeting, and there are issues with Santana and Ortiz. They're upset with Jericho. They want to go off on their own. They get bantering back and forth, and uh, Sammy's all upset that nobody can get along, and so he throws down his jacket and says, if you guys can't get your stuff together, I'm out of here. And he walks out, and then they set up next week. It is Santana and Ortiz against Jericho and Jake Hager. They're going to settle this with their fists. So it looks like the inner circle, after like three years, it appears to be setting up to disband. We had the debut of Switchblade Jay White. Uh, they set up uh, the Rapongi Vice versus Young Bucks match. It was scheduled for several weeks ago, but was uh, postponed because Rocky Romero got COVID. He's ready to go. They're doing the match on Friday on Rampage. And Switchblade is going to be there. And as noted, this was like a last-minute thing that they came up with on Sunday. So hopefully he has matches. Hopefully they do something with him. But I'm not sure to the extent or to what extent he's going to be doing anything in uh, NAW. He's all over Impact Show. Keith Lee beat Isaiah Cassidy. We talked about this match. It was awesome. And then he killed both guys afterwards. And just, I mean, this was one of those deals where uh, Tony Khan, you know, he's talking about how when he was a kid... For some of you older guys that want to feel even older, when he was a kid, him and all of his friends at school were trying to figure out who the higher power was going to be, and they were so disappointed when it turned out to be Vince. He didn't want people disappointed, and I don't know about the viewing audience, but at home, nobody was disappointed by Keith Lee showing up and killing Isaiah Cassidy. Punk's partner ended up being John Moxley. They beat FTR. I thought this match was great. FTR is a great team. They got heat on Punk. They got heat on Moxley. I mean, they did such a good job with near falls. I thought they were going to beat CM Punk a second week in a row to keep him away from MJF for a while. But they didn't. And CM Punk hit the GTS and uh, got the pin. So he gets to pick the match anytime, anywhere at the Revolution pay-per-view to face MJF. Jade Cargill and AQA, holy smokes, not good at all. It's former Zeta Ray Mir from NXT, trained by Booker T. I don't know what happened here, but uh, it was bad. Jade was like, you know, it takes a while to be able to maintain your composure when things go wrong. She's only had 26 matches. 
She could not maintain her composure. She was so mad during this match and when the match was over. So one of those deals where she wins and she's just like angry, which, you know, in real life, she's beat this woman. What's she angry about? Well, she's angry because the ref was calling spots and the match still went awry. We had the five-minute rookie challenge. Serena Deeb and Katie Arquette. It was just quick. Serena beat her. I think everyone can probably see where this is going. Rampage Friday, no spoilers. Young Bucks, no spoilers. Young Bucks versus Rapongi Vice. Hook versus Blake Lee. Britt Baker versus Robin Renegade. <laughs> and Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus against the Gun Club for the tag titles. But I won't spoil it for anybody. Tune in Friday night. By the Robin way, Robin Renegade. By the way, I uh, I know people think I'm like making fun of all of this, and you know, I don't mind what? at all that I know who's going to win every match in AEW 95% of the time. It doesn't bother me. In fact, I like it because that means it makes sense. But I know some people, they don't want their spoilers, so I won't spoil the show. And finally, I thought this match was great. Hangman Page and Lance Archer in a Texas death match. If blood ain't your thing, you know, go watch NXT 2.0. These two blokes, I mean... They got thrown through glass. They got busted open. They're bleeding everywhere. They're using all of the gimmicks. And, uh, I mean, the story of the match was so simple. Out comes uh, Jake the Snake Roberts and uh, why do I all Dan Lambert. Dan Lambert. I think his name, I don't know. But anyway, he comes out and he takes off the top rope because Hangman's finish is the buckshot. You must use the top rope to spring in. Unless you're like Mascarita Sagrada. So the top rope is unscrewed. They just beat the stuffing out of each other. They pound on each other. Uh, they And it was not boring. Some Texas death matches because of the slow count can be boring. But like this ref was doing a normal 10 count. So I was never bored during this match. And finally at the end, the referee ends up bent forward. Hangman does the springboard over the back of the referee Hits the buckshot. They both tumble over the middle rope because there's no top rope, and they crash through two tables outside. These fans went nuts for this spot, and it was awesome. And Hangman gets to his feet. He's the winner. He didn't look weak. He looked like a champion. The place goes crazy for the guy. And then they had Adam Cole come out and, and uh, issue the challenge for the championship match, which begs the question why he lost to Orange Cassidy. But that's another matter entirely. I thought the match was great. I thought the finish was awesome. I thought both guys looked good. You know, Lance Archer lost, but he looked like a monster. He looked like a murder hawk monster. Hangman beat him because he's the champ, but it was a tough road to hoe. I loved it. Great show. Yeah, from top to bottom, it was a great show. And I don't know if there's, you know, what you want to touch on, you know, coming away from it. You know, there are lots of different things. You know, who's Serena Deeb? Who's going to be that person that comes in? Is this a good time to bring? Would that be Athena? Could be Would Ember be Moon. Nice time? Well, that's, Everyone yeah, keeps yeah. saying Athena, so I'm trying to help you all out. It's Ember Moon is when Dave and Mike are talking about Athena. That's what we're talking about. Just helping out here. Wow, you really helped out. Thanks a lot for that. Well, you know, um, I did hear all day yesterday when, when Dave did Observer Radio and kept mentioning Athena, but never said who Athena was. And so I got flooded with people saying, can you tell us who Athena is next time? Well, now I'm telling you. Ember Moon. The former Ember Moon. Athena. That's who it is. It's not Zeta Ray Mir. It's not Orange Cassidy either. You just want to go ahead and tackle that now? No, nah, I'm over it. I just don't get it. Like, why couldn't you wait to do that match where you beat Orange Cassidy? He's challenging for the title in three weeks. But the, he my... was undefeated. He'd never been beaten. I don't care what the record says. I saw him lose in front of my own two eyes. Well, the crazy and Orange part ain't there... even on the show afterwards. The crazy part there for me was you could have did the exact same ending, but it's actually because they're both crashing down into unconsciousness that Adam Cole wasn't the one that actually would have his arm over Orange Cassidy. And, you know, Orange would have lost nothing. 
you know, people would have saw he was the one that actually caused, was going through this to cause Adam Cole the harm. And it just so happened that the way they flopped, Cole was the one who got the cheap victory. And I, yeah, and I don't think it, you know, it's not the end of the world. You know, people are making a big deal out of it, making a big football out of it and wanting to, to fight over it. It's really not that big of a deal, but... When you do have Cole going for it, when he is undefeated, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, 65 beats per minute. Go ahead. What's up? They wanted me to check my heart rate. Oh. Go ahead. No, that was, that was it. That was it. Yeah, they could have done that. Or they could have not done the match when they did it. Or they could have... I just... I'm flabbergasted. But what's done is done. Now they do everything they can to build up Adam Cole for three weeks. It's a great promo. I love Adam Cole. I just don't get it. It's okay to not get something in AEW, everybody. It's okay to be critical of the product every now and then. All I hear is I'm paid by AEW, and then I do a criticism, and then I really get it. No, not every I can't now win and then. for losing. Not every now and then. When they, when you feel as though they deserve to be criticized, you don't have to parse it out and go, well, I haven't criticized them in a while. Now it's really time to jump on them. No, it's it's... I, you know, the people are going to be the way they are about their thing. So that it is what it is. And no, I'm not running for Congress. <laughs> I always you love when, all people, the wrestling fans, when people when that... disagree with me and then they come up with like the, the stupidest argument. And this person goes, Britt lost to Rosa in the lights out match. And how did that work out? What? What? How does that have anything? Was Britt challenging for the title four weeks after that match with Thunder Rosa? No, she was the champion. And they're going to use all of that to build up a match with Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa at this next pay-per-view. That's what they're going to do. Now, w would I have had Thunder Rosa beat her in an unsanctioned match and then not do anything with her for a year? Well, no, I wouldn't have. But that's a completely, totally different argument in a completely, totally different scenario. They do, they do. My point is this, everybody. They do such a good job protecting people and making them into stars, okay? They almost never do a job, and when the big stars do a job, there's a point to them doing that job. In this case, I don't understand the point of Adam Cole losing to Orange Cassidy. If Adam Cole lost to Orange Cassidy, and Orange Cassidy is now going to be challenging for the TNT title the next week— Fine, he got a win over Adam Cole, and now he's challenged. He vanished after beating Adam. I haven't seen the guy since he beat Adam Cole. Meanwhile, the loser, Adam Cole, is now the, is in contention for a title four weeks later. I don't get yeah, it. I don't. If to you're me, fine with it, fine. I don't get it. No, to me, you did not have to put a happy face at the end of that story between them and best friends if that's what it was which obviously was because cole's on to something else to me didn't that wasn't the send the home fans home happy thing i think they would have already been happy and again cole getting that cheap thing and going on to get that victory to me pro wrestling wise that's the way i would have booked it and it makes more sense that way although again i don't know what does cole win the title all of a sudden from adam page and now orange cassidy gets a shot you know again what do you do with it google Tiger Jackson wrestler, and then go into images, and then go into GIFs. <laughs> he does all these spots where he spins on his head. I'm crying. And I'm supposed to be watching this stupid show, but I just keep watching Tiger Jackson spots on Google. I hereby induct him into the Matt Cleary Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you, Craig. That's two to, that's two to zero or whatever. Aye. Okay. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.